Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on time to tonight's webinar session, Letters of Recommendation with the esteemed Thomas Kaufman, a colleague of mine whom I have learned much about. And we really appreciate you coming here on time. This recording will be posted later on on the U.S. Embassy Tokyo YouTube channel. So please know that uh, you will be able to go back and see the recording again. So here with us tonight is Thomas Kaufman, who is a graduate student at the, at the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana in learning design and leadership in the Department of Education Policy and Leadership, specializing in MOOCs and communities of practice. He is also a renewing English language fellow uh, at the Institute of Sepulu, and I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but Nopember in Surabaya, Indonesia. And he has over 15 years of experience teaching English, harnessing the affordances of educational technology and supporting reliable and valid assessment. He has presented at several conferences, most recently as a plenary speaker at TIFL in Indonesia, and has publications related to digital tools in the classroom. Let's welcome Thomas, who will be speaking on the very important topics of letters of recommendation tonight. Thank you, Thomas. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, yes, thank you, Claire. Uh, yeah, you, you came pretty close with the pronunciation of the school. Uh, hopefully, maybe we'll have some of us there <laughs> joining in, trickling in. Um, yeah, you know, I uh, I had a, a bet with Gina that I would get more participants for my session, but I think I'm losing from uh, Tuesday's group. <laughs> but there's still time. We'll see what happens um, by the end. Anyway, welcome everyone. Great to have you here. I hope um, that I can help you along your journey to graduate study and um, what you need to know regarding uh, letters of recommendation. Quick uh, type in the chat where you're from. Where are you at right now? Let's see who we're representing. See if we got any ITS folks. Just type your country, school, whatever you want to say. Uh, type in the chat. Okay, Indonesia, Laos, cool, Sumatra. Wow, we're getting around. Yeah. See, we got any folks recently impacted by the earthquake? Wow. Japanese folks? Yeah, I'm sure, I guess you felt that over there. We had an earthquake in Indonesia, I guess, two weeks ago. Not nearly as big, um, but it was big to us. Um, I spent quite a bit of time in... Uh, in Taiwan. I'm, I'm wearing my Taiwan shirt here. Do we have anyone from Taiwan? I guess we're seeing a lot of Indonesian folks. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone from uh, <laughs> ITS, Institute Sapulo no November. Well, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, I don't see any Taiwan or anyone in ETS. Oh, well, fair enough. Well, maybe on the recording. Shout out to you later. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, I think I can skip the bio part. Um, consent to be videotaped. Yeah, this is recorded. Great to have your interaction um, in the chat. And I've got some kind of questions and things for us to work through. But mostly, yeah, it's going to be me giving information. So we don't need this. Um, special thanks to uh, Mr. Michael Alpaw. Uh, he We'll be talking, I think, next Thursday. Um, he assisted me with the slides for this topic and kind of gave me something to start with. Um, and then I kind of worked into our context for, for our audience. Um, so his email is attached to this at the end. I'll give you the slides and uh, QR code and um, lots of take home stuff. So thank him um, and, and thank us. OK, so. Here we go. Let me turn all this down, put the zoom away, pin myself, whoops. All right, 
So I've got a lot to cover. Um, we're going to blast through some of it. I'm going to give you kind of the things to work through. Um, and you can kind of read through some of it on your own as well. But basically, we're going to look through uh, the introduction to uh, letters of recommendation, letters of reference, key components, best practices, things to avoid, examples, and of course, Q&A. Uh, your questions are super valuable. Um, I'm here for you. So please let me know what you're thinking and how I can kind of hopefully uh, share some insights. So anytime, jump, pop in the chat, put your questions. Um, I'm not going to answer it at any time, but uh, we'll get to it. All right. So here we go. First question, what is a letter of recommendation? Why are letters of recommendation important? What are the key components of strong ones? And what is your personal experience with them? We've got 55 people. We could do a quick breakout room. Um, or if somebody wants to just put in the chat some answers, uh, that'd be great. Do we want to do a breakout session? Or do you want to, does somebody want to just talk? Talk about one of these answers? Somebody want to type the answers? Maybe someone's already typing. We'll wait a moment. So I imagine you know what they are if, if you joined, <laughs> unless you're just taking all of our stuff, joining all the sessions. Big group. Maybe we don't know each other um, quite. All right, uh, let's get hello. to know each other. Hello. Um. Okay. Uh. For the first of all, uh, I'm Safina Ramasafiri from Indonesia, and I just wanna answer for the discussion about the letter of the recommendation. Um. For the first question is what is a letter of recommendation? A letter of recommendation is a formal document that addresses your suitability and qualification for a particular positions. Excellent. Uh, that's yeah, my question. Yeah. All right. So we got the first one down. Okay. Who's next for the next one? You choose. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, it's um, just like you said, you can look it up what it what it is. What do we use it for? Right. Uh, when you apply to a school, uh, the admissions department asks for it. And so you go to your favorite teacher or your guidance counselor, or um, maybe your boss, if you're working, and ask them to say good things about you, right? I think we know that. Anybody want to share some personal experience? Any tips and tricks with us? Two, three, or four, anybody want to talk or type? Okay, hello. Hi, Thomas. It's me again. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so, uh, yeah, maybe I'd like to, I'm from Indonesia, and I'd like to share, yeah, my experience about that of recommendation. So, well, actually, for me, um, it is not easy yeah, to get the letter of recommendation. Why? Because it must, uh, it must, uh, what is it? It must be a, a, a the information must be true yeah so that's why um we need to work hard and play hard no, no, no. we need to work hard yeah so that our like uh, supervisor or our uh what is it um, uh, professor really knows that we uh, uh we are uh, really uh, a hard worker or something like that yeah a hard uh, working people and we uh, that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm experiencing yeah, about uh, writing a letter of uh, recommendation so to get the uh, a good recommendation from as you said that uh, our professor and our uh, supervisor must tell a good a good things about us so that's why uh, that's not easy I think so we need to prove them first we need to prove 
to our uh, supervisor, to our professor that yes, we are good and uh, we are really uh, 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 maybe we, we really deserve yeah to get uh, that scholarship because we we are working hard for that. So that's my experience, Thomas. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Auntie, great to hear a familiar voice, um, someone that I've gotten to know pretty well. And I think I, if you need, I'd be happy to write you a letter of recommendation. <laughs> I'm offering that to you if you're interested for uh, what your career advances are. Yeah. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you for uh, sharing with that. And um, yeah, the, the truths true parts of um, not just saying something glittering, uh, but that is meaningful. So it should be someone that can say those things, saying that knows you well, right? Yeah. yeah Got a lot right. in the And I can, I can attest to um, all of your excellent work, um, working with the minister and embracing technology, uh, committed to teachers, committed to professional development and um, just an all around uh, kind hearted, good person. <laughs> so I, I'll write that for you. <laughs> How's that? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, so we've got some stuff in the chat here. So the text should be written and organized according to the English speaking countries, cultural norms. Awesome, yeah, yeah, that is, uh, an important piece, right? Um, culture. Uh, do we put our photograph on our letter of recommendation? Well, in Asia you might, but if you're sending it to the US, no, you don't. Um, so yeah, there, there are certain norms. Um, so we gotta kind of consider our audience, right? Yes, Martin says, recommendation letter for PhD, if the background applicant possibly uh from is that there's a question there so if you're applying to a university and the you know and someone there writes you a letter from that that's solid yeah that's fantastic um uh, if you can right not everyone has that ability but so yeah they want to get a sense of um your potential, your ability to thrive in the school, your aptitude. Um, so if you're already working with someone on their faculty and you've done research with them and that faculty is willing to tell you, um, say things about you, yeah, absolutely. That's a great person to, to make, to ask. Um, yeah, Jessica Santoso says, letter of recommendation is important to give admission officers another point of view from a third person who knows the applicants well. Yeah, so it's um, beyond just the formulaic stuff, the, the database that they have to choose from of people with, you know, research and GPA and uh, extracurricular, blah, blah, blah. But it's it's something someone's telling about you uh, and hopefully stories. Yeah, mentioning academic and professional capacities, um, capabilities, excuse me. Yeah, great. And that sounds like an Indonesian name. Letter of recommendation is a part of a scholarship document. You can have it from your boss, mentor, lecture. But you must be sure she or he is the professional of their job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you have to ask the right person. I'm glad you brought that up. So um, it's great if you have someone who has a very high status, but they have to know about you. <laughs> and be polite, they might say no. Uh, if they if they're not comfortable with it, you know, a lot of uh, a, a, a trap is that um, people choose someone whose name is going to be recognized, but then that person turns around and says, um, "I don't, I can't attest to this. Here's what they're asking me about you. I I don't know." 
uh, your skill in research. I've never researched with you. Um, yeah, I, I think you're a good person, um, but I, I haven't been your supervisor. <laughs> uh, so make so so yeah, you do want to kind of find the right person there to ask, um, consider cultural norms, and and have good uh, stories that can kind of get beyond uh, the typical stuff. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. We've got a good little background brainstorming stuff. So here's what they look like. Uh, on the left, I've got a template, and I'm going to shoot that to you in the chat right now. And in that template, um, that the yellow part is kind of the more specific things, you know, your name, <laughs> uh, the position, the organization, and, and the other non-highlighted parts, conventional text, are the generic stuff, the, the format that everything is going to have. Um, so in a lot of cases, you will kind of write this yourself um, in the West. Again, culture. Um, in, in, say, American culture, you'll ask someone for a letter of recommendation, and sometimes um, they'll say, yeah, why don't you give me some bullet points? Why don't you give me some things um, that I can tell about that? Uh, and then they'll kind of flesh it out into this format. So choose that person. Choose, think about, you know, what you want it to say. And who your audience is, right? Uh, sometimes, no. Sometimes they will, of course, just give you some, hopefully not generic, hopefully they'll be happy to say great things about you and be able to get you into that school of your dreams. So yeah, there is the um, template on the left with the yellow highlighted parts you need to change that relate to you. You know, I'm gonna put the captions on here, there you go. And on the right, we have a sample. We're gonna look at these samples later. I'll um, give you that file too. But as you can see, <laughs> your supervisor is your father. <laughs> well, I, I think he knows you well, but I hope he'll say good things about you. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so on the right, we've got kind of a sample of a letter of recommendation, compliments of um, Penn State University. They have a lot of great materials that I sourced for, for our purposes here. Um, and as you can see, uh, it, it gets a little deeper than the template. It gets maybe more than a page um, and kind of more detailed. So, um, I don't know if you're maybe tasked with writing these for someone or you need them. Um, so the first thing would be, you know, find the right person to ask. Um, be polite. Uh, if they say no, ask someone else. Um, if you don't have a good relationship with them, uh, maybe don't ask them. Uh, or, um, and start th and remind them, you know, when you ask. Um, maybe give some some points about things you've done together or things that they can say about you, especially if you're in a um, large university with lots of students and, you know, it's this one faculty to 60 students, uh, remind them who you are and what is special about you, and they'll determine if, if they can do it for you. But uh, so, yes, let's start thinking about that. Uh, what should it have? Okay, why are they important? Right, I think we got into this. Uh, valuable insights into achievements, character, potential, right? That's the whole thing. Um, there are limited numbers of seats in at the school you're applying to. So you need to kind of show that you're worthy of sitting in that chair, receiving that learning um, over somebody else, right? And so the re letter of recommendation is one piece of that uh, to uh, highlight your skills. And 
we um, also have the admissions officers. They, they think about aptitude, so potential aptitude, right? So you want to write it and speak to the admissions officer, and they want to hear things that relate to your skills, your abilities, who you are, your personality, your character, all those good stuff. Um, and it, it, it's beyond just that typical um, formula, formulaic stuff that everybody has. You get a personal essay too. Um, that certainly speaks to who you are, uh, but it's a bit more unbiased, right? I uh, hope uh, that, that people can kind of talk about you um, in a positive light. And it can help you stand out, right? Uh, that's the idea. You you want it to make you stand out. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at what the key pieces are. And I'm going to blast through some of this. Perhaps now is a good time to share the PowerPoint with you in the chat. So if you want to dig deeper into what we're doing and follow along, okay, PowerPoint in the chat. So yeah, what are the pieces? We have the introduction to it. We have the context, specific examples, comparison to peers, conclusion. And if we look back at this, we could kind of pinpoint here, here, here is Whoops, why'd I post that? All right. Mm, playing with the Zoom tools. What did I do? Okay. Uh, maybe we'd say one here, two here, three here, four here. I don't know. Yeah. So the different pieces kind of fit together. So if you're kind of drafting one of these, think about the kind of things that your um off your writer is going to need to know okay so let's look at the introduction introduction it'll give kind of the background the names the the degree program uh you know hopefully they're not they don't put the wrong name or put you're applying to different programs and you put penn state when you wanted harvard or penn or whatever uh uh they want they should start by mentioning you know i'm the professor, I've known them for this long. Uh, I worked in an independent study together, something uh, that they've done. So then it should be formal. You should have some kind of cordiality that um, I hope you uh, read this letter earnestly with sincerity and prudence. Uh, it should sound uh, very sincere. Um, the purpose, you know, just tell the admissions office why they're reading a letter of recommendation. Okay. And of course, kind of a thesis, the main points. Um, so that it is in the introduction, but like most thesis statements, you're probably going to want to flesh out the details and then go back and change it um, to be more refined, to look at some of the details. Um, um, put them into a con complete and concise statement. Okay, so what about context? What do we need there? Of course, your GPA, coursework, projects. Yeah, don't, uh, there's already that stuff in the application. But if it's relevant, if there's something, you know, if you want to tell the story behind the GPA, or if you want to talk about a specific project, um, you can talk about that. I wouldn't just, you know, bullet point stuff. Um, but it's more of a narrative form. It's a, uh, um, a reference. So other things that you've done, you could talk about clubs, sports, volunteer work, your leadership, your commitment, right? Yeah, those are things you can include. Think about some adjectives, right? Your work ethic, creativity, problem solving, abilities, interpersonal skills. Be specific. Yeah. So um, I'm creative. Okay, uh, I, I'm so I'm creative because I love to draw and sing and make music. Oh, wow, you're super good, you know, and, and even more than that. I'm creative because I uh, rewrote my own 
uh, orchestra music and sang it to a group of people in the swimming pool. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, at a, a, a Rocky Horror Picture Show um, theater bit, whatever. The more specific, the more unique, um, the more you it is. And a lot of this uh, kind of comes back to those personal statements. So these are the same things that you want to say about yourself. And so it should also kind of echo someone else saying them about you. So it's really about what would your supervisor say about you? Um, and so these are some or possibly all of the things that they would mention. Uh, challenges, you might wanna, might wanna talk about your resilience, your determination, you know, anything that, that tells the admissions department, wow, this is the person, we want them in our school. And your goals, uh, that, that you're driven, that you're motivated, that, that you want to work on a specific research project, perhaps. Um, again, a lot of overlap with personal statements and um, but a different author and perhaps a different reader. It might be the same reader, same person reading your personal statement might also read your letter of recommendation. Um, so it'd be good if they kind of align together. If you're saying that you're dedicated and hardworking and you did this great research project and then you have your supervisor talking about this research project. Um, that's a very compelling story. Yeah. So once we get you know that stuff, then we drill down. So we might just list uh, the research project or your favorite or the class. I'm so and so. I had this person in this class, and uh, they were the top ten percent in the class. And then maybe talk about the class, talk about um, how the you always had a lot of questions. They could talk about how uh, you were very active. Your final project was amazing. Um, you helped other classmates, something specific, right? And so this is where you might want to think about your specific achievements and 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 reach out to those people who can speak to that. Of course, you can tell that story, but have them tell it or or you help them tell it even. Uh, and yeah, of course, your skills, right? So again, talking about creativity, have someone else tell a story about you being creative rather than just saying, oh, he's creative, she's creative. Um, how they contribute to the learning environment. Again, helping classmates, something like that. All right, I'm gonna go faster. Work experience, yeah. Uh, your boss can talk about um, how much money you make the company or how great you are and uh, as a, the best employee on the team or whatever. Um, faculty interaction, yeah. So not just a student who's quiet in the class, but someone who's connecting with the faculty and going to the offices and kind of sharing ideas, having discussions, um, really, really interested in the subject, you know, not just learning it for the test, but just kind of maybe has a passion for, for the subject. That would be something great to tell. Um, so think about what you have, what you've done, and who can attest to that? And yeah, there, there, then there's also going to be a section on comparing you with others. It's about making you stand out. It's about helping you shine. So uh, how we do that. The impact you had on the group, um, you collaborated, even your peers could write a, a letter of that if you're stuck on it. Qualifiers, strongest students I've taught, stand out, um, but don't go overboard with that. Um, you don't want, it just feels um, contrived. It, it feels false. If, if every, if you're a admissions 
counselor and you're reading all these letters and they keep saying, oh, best student ever, best student ever, best student ever. It's like, are they, you've, uh, you've been teaching for 20 years and you've known this person for two years and that's your best student, is that true? Um, but there are ways, of course, to say top 10 in career or um, great at something, something. Uh, but you don't want it to be too broad. And kind of a balance between um, strengths, but also improvements. Sometimes if it's not a letter or, uh, well, Yeah, this is the part to talk about that. Um, there is room for suggestions for people to be kind of balanced uh, in telling about your weaknesses. Uh, something that, you know, with the right mentor, um, you could be better at blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that feels weird. But actually, it's it's better. It makes the positives more truthful. If we also have a little bit of a negative that um, kind of uh, is not really a negative. It's like kind of, well, if, if I had to say something bad about the person, uh, I would say blah, blah, blah. Or, or something genuine. Um, so, so don't be afraid of, if there's a little bit of negative in there, that actually makes the positive, uh, more, more believable. And finally, yeah, the, the ending of the letter, sum it up, conclude how they'll be strong. You should choose them. They're great. They were great for me. They'll be great for you. Uh, additional info. That would be great if, you know, they could put their email or if you have any questions, please contact, da, da, da. Um, hopefully the person that you're having write this already knows this, but if they don't, uh, feel free to use those templates and samples that I'm giving you and uh, guide them along to maybe a more Western or American cultural norm. Um, probably your professors know how to write letters of recommendation in Asia. Uh, but by now you might realize that there's some differences. So yeah, we'll look at those letters in a book and thank them, be polite, wrap it up um, in the end of the letter. Okay, so we want them to be honest and objective, uh, professional language. You don't wanna have mistakes. You don't wanna have uh, some weird informal tone. Uh, this should sound like someone with some some ethos, some credibility. And um, with that, tailor the letter to the application. Um, of course, put the school's name down, get that correct if you're doing different letters. Uh, but think about what the school wants or you know what their specific goals are what's the the mission statement of the school or what um research some of the faculty are doing what they're uh specific to consider your audience uh maybe it'll get to some of the faculty in the department and so Mention something that the school is known for uh, and, and that you could possibly fit in there. Um, a lot of that. So, so consider your audience. Follow the guidelines. Follow the instructions. Whatever they're looking for, give them what they want. If they say, say something negative, say something negative. If they want um a b and c and you give them a and b that's no good uh so if your recommender gives you the letter and you might say uh can you change this can you add that this is actually part of the guidelines 
or if they want you to say things, you know, kind of give them the bullet points. If they do it themselves, well, you just got to trust that they're smart enough to figure it out. Um, but that could hurt. Yeah. If, if they have specific instructions, uh, they want them to be followed. Submit it on time. Don't be late. If there's a deadline, meet it. <laughs> I don't know what else I could say to that. So how about some traps? Uh, we talked about choosing the wrong person. And there's some stories on that. Uh, let's go through. Okay, so being vague would be something bad if your reviewer kind of they didn't know you that well. That's going to show through in the letter. Um, so I guess having choosing the incorrect author, the fourth one there, kind of speaks to that too. And you know, someone that the teacher had 120 students and you got to be in their class. What can they say about you? <laughs> Choose someone else. Um, or maybe think about, <laughs> think now about some connections you want to make and people uh, that can um, attest to your abilities. Uh, if that's your father, good for you, but most of us are not so lucky. <laughs> Uh, overly negative would certainly be bad. Um, again, if you choose someone who doesn't like you, um, that's going to show through in the letter. If you had a bit of a contentious relationship with your supervisor, um, don't ask them to write a letter for you. Uh, it won't, they won't be the right one for the job. Uh, choose someone else. Uh, everybody's going to have great things, I, I think. Unless you really burn a lot of bridges. <laughs> Hopefully there are people uh, that can do that, that aren't just going to say, because you might not see the letter. You might just see the result. You might help draft the letter. You might only see the result of the letter. Uh, so think about, ask the person, do you feel comfortable doing this? Um, can you can you say nice things about me? <laughs> uh, well, what about, and then of course, give them some ideas uh, and let them, they're the ones signing the letter. So let them have uh, their final say on it and respect that. Uh, what else is bad? Less effective letters are, are biased letters. Things that um, someone from your church. <laughs> well, can we trust that? I mean, I think your priest, your imam, your monk, your uh, monk, what do we call them? They're, they're all going to love everybody. So eh, that letter is almost worthless. We want it to be someone. It'd be great if they started a letter and said, I never, I hardly ever write these letters for people, but this student is great. <laughs> and here's why, right? Well, hey, that's a, a opposite of bias, not so rosy. Can I jump in to just add some information? Um, sure thing. With going on about thinking about who is going to write your letter of recommendation, as Thomas mentioned, you know, being selective about who you would like to write your letter of recommendation is very important. You want to select someone who knows you in a professional or academic capacity. So someone like a religious leader, a family member, or a friend would probably not be the best person to write a letter of recommendation unless the application specifically states that they want that person to have a, a personal relationship with you. Typically, grad school applications, they're not looking for that because they're looking to see how do you do in a context of academics, in the context of a professional work setting. So you want someone who is going to be able to speak to that, meaning a work supervisor, a professor, um, your thesis advisor, 
those would be some people who might be appropriate for you. Go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, those would be um, good people to choose as opposed to some of the bad ones that are not really, you know, your friends and family are going to say nice things and they could talk about your character, but they might not really understand what you do in an academic setting. Um, so yeah, certainly they're looking for people who can highlight those aspects of you. So think about if you haven't already, what makes you stand out and maybe think about people who can attest to that. Yeah. Faculty, thesis advisor, um, folks that you've worked with in an academic capacity. Question. Okay. Is academic letter of recommendation a must? I've been in the workforce for almost five years and my professors might not be the best person to write a letter of recommendation about me. Great, great question. So it depends. Um, I think you, it, if your work is re relevant to the field that you wanna study in, then absolutely your um, supervisors in the workforce can attest to some of the uh, qualities that make you a good employee, would make you a good grad student, and, and your interest in the field and your leadership abilities. I mean, sure, sure, those are um, valuable people, uh, but I think, a professor would also be valuable and that they can really say it in the way that um, an, an admission counselor wants to know and specific about your conduct in a class. So uh, acad is an academic a must? Probably not. Uh, but is it Maybe if you have three, I'd say one as an academic should be. Uh, Claire, are you still with us? Do you want to weigh in on that one? Sure. Um, I think that, of course, having a professor be a person who is writing a letter of recommendation is going to be very helpful. Um, oftentimes, grad schools will may request more than one letter of recommendation. So I would say that one of those can be an employer and one of those can be a professor. If, for example, you are out of school for a long time and maybe you're wondering, does my professor remember who I am? Um, I would definitely reach out to them and first ask uh, and try and in the email, get them to remember who you are. Uh, and if it's helpful, you can share things like your transcript, the grades you received in their courses that you've taken with them, or previous academic papers or assignments you've done in their class. This will help them remember the kind of work that you did in their courses. Uh, and so it's really important to then provide that. Professors have hundreds of students that go through and so you're right, probably it is very difficult for them to remember who you are um, amongst the many hundreds of students. So if they agree, first asking and agree um, to, to write a letter of recommendation for you, I would definitely provide some of those things to make it the least work possible for them, right? So when someone asks me for a letter of recommendation, it is really helpful when they provide things like the program that they're applying to, the how I know them. If they were a student of mine, if they include previous papers or assignments that they submitted to me um, or grades, those are things that would be really helpful for me in writing the letter of recommendation. So I, I always appreciate when uh, someone who's requesting a letter of recommendation provides those things to me. 
Even if they are retired, uh, yes, they are eligible to write a letter of recommendation for you. So that should be no problem at all. Um, you know, at some point they were an academic advisor, even if they are not now. Uh, maybe they are, if they are retired, uh, maybe they feel like, oh, I'm not really interested in doing that. Uh, so when you are making a request, it is truly a request, they can say no. Um, so do do keep that in mind. All right, Thomas, I'll hand it over to you. Retired folks, you know, want to stay relevant. Um, so they might appreciate <laughs> being asked. Uh, it'd be a challenge maybe to find their personal email. They they may or may not have access to uh, their, their university email. Um, they might be doing something else and, and just stepping away from all of it. Uh, but certainly that uh, there's a good chance that they have the time and interest and really want to help you um, with your letter. I, I think that could be uh, a strong person to ask. If you can reach them, um, and if they're they they remember you, and if they still do, there is a chance, yeah, that they don't want to uh, be involved with work anymore. But yeah, give it a try. But they're definitely um, valuable. So so from from an admissions counselor point of view, uh, <laughs> even if they're retired, they they're still an academic. There's their words have merit. Uh, so what they say is, I think, just as important as a, a working um, advisor. Yeah, cool. Great questions. Yeah, keep them coming. Uh, let's kind of give you a little bit to pick through, see what other kind of questions will come up. So now I'm going to give you the samples to look at. We're down to about 10 minutes. Um, hmm. Why don't we just, we'll try to do this in like three minutes. Uh, I'll give you the samples. And if you're in group one, two, or three, look through these samples and think about these questions. And we'll kind of um, discuss it together a bit. So in the chat, we have sample one, two, and three. We'll try to, we're running out of time. We've got a good group. We still need time to look. Yeah, we'll do a quick breakout room and discuss these questions. Come back in a bit. Woo 25 people in a room, why not? Okay, I uh, heard that some of you, maybe all of you, didn't get a chance to download the samples from the chat. Um, so maybe we'll skip this activity. Uh, I definitely want to leave time for questions. Um, so hopefully now you can see it in the chat and start working through some of these sample letters and have questions. So let's discuss anything you want. So look at the samples, have questions, think about the talk, have questions. Type your questions, speak your questions. Um, so I wanted to circle back to the question regarding what if a family member is your supervisor or who would be able to write a letter of recommendation. Um, I would advise against having a family member or someone personal to you write a letter of recommendation as uh, that may be seen as biased and 
admissions officers may look at that and not uh, maybe a little bit question questioning um, the intent behind it and how sound the person's judgment is, especially if they are a family member. So I would definitely recommend asking someone else if there is a colleague so maybe uh, your family member is a supervisor, but you have other colleagues that are not family members, or maybe you have a manager or other um, people in the company who are not family members who might be able to write a letter of recommendation. You can ask those people. So it doesn't have to be always the supervisor. It can be, um, you know, a manager or someone who is going to be adjacent to you. Um, in structure. Um, and if there are other, uh, um, I think it mentions ex-supervisor, um, definitely something that someone that you can ask as well. Sometimes the uh, letter of recommendation, the university will specify what kind of person should be writing that. So they might ask specifically for a supervisor or someone who has directly managed you. In that case, um, you, you can ask a former supervisor and explain that your current supervisor is a family member and so you wanted to make sure that it was not biased. So I would give um, that kind of information as well. Um, as far as someone who might be uh, like an extracurricular uh, instructor or something like that, because unless that is the field that you are looking to go into, I would not ask for a letter of recommendation from that person. Um, you want it to be someone who knows you in a professional or an academic capacity. So if you were applying to, for example, uh, study dance, then your dance teacher would be a great person to ask for the letter of recommendation. But if not, I would say that person would probably not be the one that I would request a letter of recommendation from. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll second all of that. Yeah, we we want to avoid uh, nepotism uh, and kind of who you know and helping you get into uh, high status positions. No, that's a cultural difference. Um, and so that that would be seen as being biased. Yeah, having your family member who's your soup also your supervisor do that, but someone adjacent to that family member um, that if the admission counselor doesn't can't doesn't know that they are you want it to be um, it, it shouldn't just be positive. It shouldn't be overly positive and only positive. A, a well-rounded letter um, does kind of speak to your true personality. And, and yeah, I guess uh, sometimes you'll have to take who you can get um, given where you are, but kind of think of it as, as a package and what those voices can contribute in um, creating the package, creating the, the portfolio of you uh, from, from what they, their expertise and what they see and what they can attest to. Okay, another question. Do you think it's a good idea to ask a faculty who I was working professionally? Welcome not I was learning from or researching with. Um, yeah, I think so. Well, so I guess there's, there's different layers of reference. So this feels like someone who has um, a leadership position, but in this sense, you are maybe equal with them. Uh, and that might not be looked upon in the best way. That might seem, the admissions uh, counselor might say, well, why didn't you have your supervisor write the letter? Why are you having your coworker do this? 
Um, so uh, if your supervisor is too busy, maybe, uh, but I, I think there would maybe be a better person to ask. And as Claire said, um, follow the guidelines, see what they're looking for. If if they want a colleague, well, there you go. Um, if they want someone who's an expert in the field, yeah, uh, and, and your friend is more of an expert than your supervisor or your coworker, yeah, well, that, that would fit. Uh, another question from Chris Ivan Young. Do U.S. universities always ask for letters of recommendation without our involvement? Directly ask the recommender's email, not through the applicants. If yes, what is the reasoning behind this? Oh, good question. Always, uh, no. It depends. Yeah. Um, actually, most times, I think nowadays, you're just going to put the person's name and their email. Uh, but you should reach out to that person and ask <laughs> if you can put their name and their email on the application um, and give them some talking points, give them some guidance or or not. Um, ask them if they, they need assistance. Um, and take it from there. What is the reasoning for the applicant to never see the letter? It's unbiased. Um, that gives the person a chance to be honest, right? Um, some people, they'll say, yeah, I'll give you a review, and they will not share it they will give their personal their true opinion of it um and that's what they want right similar question if my professor majors in a different field and my academic achievements aren't necessarily applicable to the recommendation um well that then they can kind of speak to your um your aptitude from a standpoint of positive characteristics of you, your work ethic, your ability to be a team leader, um, your dedication. So those are a bit general. So they could tell stories related to uh, those the, the specific time that you spent with them, but in a, but it wouldn't be related to the, to the same field. Um, that's good. I think that would be valuable, but if you had someone who could do both, that would be better. Someone who could speak about um, your positive traits, personality traits, or tell stories about your work ethic and your um, capacity to do research and be a good student, uh, that would be good too, if you could get that. Yeah, um, uh, Claire, so you wanna? I just wanted to say it is time. So thank you so much everyone for all of your questions. Thank you, Thomas, for your insightful words and for sharing about letters of recommendation. I hope that this session was very helpful for everyone and that uh, you will go ahead and attend some of the other sessions that will be coming up. Uh, I will be putting in the chat box the link to the U.S. Embassy YouTube channel where you will be able to find the recordings. Uh, for the remaining sessions, as well as this one. It, it will take a few days to upload, uh, but you should see it uh, in just a few days. So please go ahead and join us uh, in the upcoming sessions. We're really excited to have this, and we feel like every single session is very important and will add some important knowledge for the graduate school application process in the U.S. And thank you again, Thomas. I really appreciate it. And Let's say thank you and we'll see everyone next week.